What is up, you guys? I'm Charming. Today, I'm going to be reacting to uh, five online mysteries that will scare the life out of you uh, by Top Five. So, I'm reacting to a Top Fives video in a, in a quick minute, but hopefully, it's be quite spooky. And uh, yeah, anyway, with that being said, hopefully, you guys like this. The original link's in the description. Make sure you guys go subscribe to Top Fives and to go support Top Fives on uh, Patreon if you can. And without any further ado, let's begin. We like nothing more than a mystery. And one of our favorite kind of mysteries are the ones that originate online, where something seemingly innocuous explodes into a full-blown conspiracy that sends people down a never-ending internet rabbit hole. Well, here we'll be looking at five online creepy mysteries that spawned endless theories and explanations, <coughs> but offered no real answers. Oh, so they haven't been solved? Don't forget that for just $2 per month, you can support us on Patreon. Who is Nine Mother Nine Horse Nine Eyes Nine, and what, what is he trying to tell us? On April 21st, 2016, a Reddit user called Nine Mother Nine Horse Nine Eyes Nine posted a disjointed snippet of text in a comment on a post titled The Cover of George Orwell's 1984 Becomes Less Censored with Wear. The seemingly random comment started a phenomena that sent Redditors down a cryptic, often disturbing rabbit hole. Now most of you have I have never heard of this. probably heard of Project MK Ultra, the CIA's mind control program, in which human subjects were used to identify and develop drugs to be used in interrogations to weaken the individual thinking and force confessions out of them. The program has for many years been the subject of conspiracy theories about what really went on. So the claim in this Reddit post about restraint bed portals and flesh interfaces, things that hadn't been you should have read the Reddit post, because I didn't read it. ...been mentioned before piqued people's interest. Over the next few months, the user scattered similar posts all across Reddit, submitting them randomly to threads where they were only vaguely related to the original subject. He posted on subjects such as Vietnam, Elizabeth Bathory, the Treblinka concentration camp, Humpback Wales, the Manson family... Humpback Wales? Okay. Family ...and LSD but his main focus seemed to be on the flesh interfaces being built somehow by shadowy programs. Flesh interface, say what now? Sounds like an adult toy if you ask me. Reddit sleuth started to piece together the macabre accounts and the phenomena developed into a mini sensation and gradually an intriguing science fiction horror story was beginning to emerge. This was skillfully and beautifully written from multiple actual historical perspectives revealing a nightmarish tale revolving around the so-called flesh interfaces and humankind's attempts to study them. The plot featured terrifying space portals. Wait, so a guy is writing just a book? He was writing a book or a story or a short story and then just scattering it across Reddit? How's that a, a mystery? Nazis, LSD experiments gone wrong, conspiracy theories, and an omnipresent entity called Mother. The story spanned from a World War II concentration camp in the 1930s to a future Atlanta in 2030. The series became known as the Interface Series. Such was the interest this user caused that cult fandom hastily built a wiki page to study and catalogue the mysterious tale, creating a timeline of known events on a subreddit that was created with its own dedicated discussion thread where enthusiasts even developed an audiobook. In the sub, moderator Gabby Cat claimed to have worked with MHE on ideas and edits, and is the main mod and MHE spokeswoman and point of contact on the subject. However, fans were desperate to know how the enigmatic Nine Mother, Nine Horse, Nine Eyes Nine was, and soon the writer started to reveal more about himself. In a now deleted post, he described himself as a 30 something American male who was an alcoholic with a history of substance abuse. The revelation pro Okay. So the whole mystery here is just who is this person? ...prompted both Vice and Gizmodo to speculate that Reddit user Yu Anata Pai, a prolific conspiracy theorist and moderator of the Shrug Life Syndicate, a subreddit of similar themes including psychedelics, psychosis, and synchronicity, is in fact the writer of the story. Sounds like it. But this has not been proven. Eventually, some became skeptical that they were being given the runaround, and the whole thing was an elaborate marketing stunt. They even linked it to the Netflix series Stranger Things that was about to debut around the time the Interface series appeared, and they were quick to point out some of the similarities with the plot. 
and many still believe that M.H.E. was or still is a writer for Stranger Things. How I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the case. Neither do I, just because if it were marketing it would be a waste of time because only a few people have ever heard of this. Marketing would be much bigger. However, the key to the interface series seemed to be the Flash interface. Readers were confused about exactly what it meant, and MHE responded to that question. Then, on July 19th, 2016, they responded with a final post, bringing to an end the interface series, but not an end to the mystery behind it or its meaning. We do not know what to make of it all, but if this user is watching this, we'd love to hear from them to put an end to the speculation. So it's just a mystery about some, uh, someone who's writing sci-fi stories? That's not much of a mystery, man. And rabbit hole that this dug, and find out the true meaning behind the interface series. It could just be a story, it doesn't have to be a meaning. This one we have covered before. But since then, there has been an anonymous update, as well as many more unanswered questions. So we thought we would revisit it with our latest thoughts. On May 16th, 2016, a YouTube channel was created, called Deeper. A few days later, on the 20th of May, five very short videos were uploaded to the channel, and a coded link was posted on 4chan that attracted curious viewers. The titles were cryptic and when translated into Latin, spelled Sectu Sunt, meaning followed by. Take a look at the first 18 second video that drew viewers down a rabbit hole with an outcome they were not expecting. All right. The next four videos posted on the same day were equally perplexing. The second one was an 18 second clip of a ceiling fan titled Around, followed by another clip of a fan titled- It's just someone being like mysterious or whatever. It's not really that like crazy. Little Culmas, which translated from Latin to English means stalker. The fourth one that day was titled BSHLK. It showed a smashed light bulb with a song by Daniel Johnson titled Poor You playing in the background. Eagle-eyed viewers were able to decode this after realizing BSHLK was a visionaire cipher and the key was Poor You, which translated to Metum, which is Latin for alarm. The theme of these videos seemed to be taking a sinister turn and the last video posted on the 20th of May was titled Here and showed a 17 second clip of a field Viewers speculated it was located in Colorado or Texas. What is with the weird VHS filter effect on the tape? The next day, a video titled Listen was posted again, showing an empty field, but this time a siren sound could be heard. And at the end of the 27 clip, there was a weird distorted sound that when put through a spectrometer, revealed the name Stephanie Ann Bauman. Stephanie Ann Bauman was a 15-year-old girl who was found dead on October 28, 1980, her body was found in a ditch in Colorado. Investigators believe- well, I guess we know it's Colorado. Believed ...that prior to her demise, she had been chased by a car and collapsed exhausted into the ditch. The case and circumstances surrounding her death remain unsolved. The video and subsequent videos continued with similar hidden- See, the weird th that's very weird because you know, at the beginning here that the person was getting chased, right? So you could make the, um, a correlation or um, connection that, oh, maybe that's supposed to be the girl being chased. ...messages and sinister themes, each offering a coded clue using either hexadecimal, Latin, or other ciphers. In the video titled 25, the name Darcy Anderson was revealed through Caesar cipher. 28-year-old Darcy Anderson was another victim whose body was found in the trunk of her own car that had been abandoned in a muddy alley in Denver. Her demise remains unsolved. In the slightly unnerving video titled Mortem, viewers suggested the name Edith Beneath Lenners was the hidden clue. Edith was a 38-year-old mother from Colorado who disappeared in 1995. As with the previous two people, her case also remains unsolved. Soon after deep- So are people thinking that the, uh, the person who uh, took out these people is the one uploading these videos? Or it could just be what I'm thinking is probably just someone Making these videos mis all mysterious like and then referencing people who were you know taken out. That's what I'm thinking Posted in the channel description another series of numbers 
along with the coordinates 38.933529. The numbers were translated through a cipher and read Karen Denise Aguilera. Karen was a 23-year-old whose body was found on May the 10th, 1988, in a field near Falcon Highway. Her case remains unsolved. Perhaps even more disturbing is that the coordinates take you there, to the exact place Karen's body was found. Shortly after the coordinates were displayed, a video featuring another ceiling fan with a strange title was translated through a cipher, spout the words, I love them all. After this video, I love them all? Oh, that's very mysterious. See, this is a mystery. This one's a lot more mysterious than the last one. This one's like, yeah, maybe this might actually be the person who took them out. The quality of the video was upped, although the content was just as disturbing. A lot of the clips featured songs from Daniel Johnston, and every video seemed to have a clue or message. Over the next two years, the uploads were sporadic, and some have since been deleted, but all the videos seemed to have been linked to unsolved crimes, and viewers became convinced Deepa was a serial Leaving that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at you know that's what it seems like at least is either that or is maybe a fan of one or maybe someone just trying to get internet fame by being cryptic and mysterious about his victims in some of the last videos uploaded many viewers allude to the fact that the owner why did it blink red might be dying and the whole thing was a deathbed confession what the frick was that you guys see that the whole thing was a deathbed you said it did you see that what is that why? Look at this random color here. Why is that there? It's bad confession. One of the latest videos uploaded to the channel was called AKTLASA, and at the end had a code in the distorted audio that, when put through a spectrometer, spelt out 700 block Marab What's a spectrometer? Poser Street, the site of another cold case murder victim. On December 10th, 2018, Deepa did a live stream with just a black screen and a strange phonic Morse code combination playing. This was decoded as possibly saying receive. The last video posted to the channel was on June 17th, 2019. The decoded link in the somber post was this. Nothing has been posted since, and whether this person is dead or not is unknown. But we're keeping an eye on the channel to see if there are any more uploads. We're not sure if this was well, it sounds as like if the person did pass away, you know. It is with heavy hearts and uh, burdened minds that we must inform you that our mutual friends passing, or of our mutual friends, friends passing. So it sounds as if the channel uploader uh, passed. It was all an augmented reality game, or an art project, as some do suspect. But if it was, it was incredibly distasteful. What's your thoughts on this one? Either one, it was the actual person who took out the people, or two, it was actually just someone trying to get fame based off of the other people and their misfortunes, which could very possibly, possibly you know, be what it is. The origins and motive behind Sad Satan. This next one is a PC game that may or may not have existed, although we suspect it did. The game called Sad Satan is a PC game built with Terra Engine. It was first reviewed on the YouTube channel Obscure Horror Corner on June 25th, 2015. Following the reviews, the channel's video of the game went viral. The channel's owner went on to give an interview with gaming website Kotuka, where he claimed to have died. Kotuka? Do you mean Kotaku? Because that's an A, not a... Oh, oh. ...downloaded the game from a Tor hidden service after receiving a tip from an anonymous subscriber. The subscriber, in turn, claimed to have found the link via a deep web internet forum from a user known as ZK. Initially, some followers were dubious of the game, fearing it may contain gore or CP, as both are common on deep web games. However, the owner of Obscure Horror Corner assured viewers that in his playthroughs, the game had not contained any such material. <laughs> Oh, that's creepy. I don't like this. Oh, I do not like this. They turn down that volume. Let's get the frig out of there. Nah. Following the interview, the subreddit Sad Satan was formed to discuss the game, and it was quickly realized the onion address provided by Obscure Horror Corner was invalid. After the discovery, the Obscure Horror Corner owner appeared again on Kotuka, claiming that the link was purposefully given in error, since the game did in fact contain graphic material. The revelation prompted Kotoku to apologize for not checking the details of the game's authenticity and content. 
However, around the same time, a new version of the game was posted to 4chan by someone claiming to be ZK, declaring that obscure horror corner had not been showing their viewers the true sad sa Maybe, maybe they don't need to know what it is. Members of the 4chan community downloaded this new version and attempted to play I can tell you I would not download it. But soon started complaining that it was causing their computers to malfunction. This is a virus? And users who did manage to play the game, they dubbed the clone said it made them feel nauseous and unwell. And they confirmed it did contain disgusting images. Suspiciously, around the same time, Obscure Horror Corner abandoned his YouTube channel for unknown reasons, and nothing has been uploaded to it since the sad Satan controversy. A little creepy, but nothing to suggest anything sinister is going on. However, as soon as the gaming community heard about this mysterious game, they scrambled to try and download and play it. A lot of the popular YouTube gaming channels attempted to review it, including PewDiePie, but what they- Oh, did PewDiePie actually- Oh, side note, PewDiePie is actually coming back, I think, today. Today or tomorrow. He's been gone for like a month and a bit now. But anyway, yeah, I, I, I don't know PewDiePie tried to play it. ...discovered in the real game was disturbing. As they progressed through the monochromatic corridors with the weird background number station music blaring, it soon became apparent that this was one sick game. <laughs> ah, I don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. I don't like it. I believe you. It's that I don't like it. Along the corridors were disturbing images and horrific photos from crime scenes. One was of serial killer Richard Cottingham's victim. Why would someone build this? Disgusting images flashed out, including one of a soldier's face mutilated by a bullet, Oof. and other disturbing things that we cannot mention. Also scattered throughout the game were photos of hideous child predators and a flash image of JFK riding in the car just prior to his assassination. It appears the game is alluding to the horrors of child abuse and the possibility of people in power knowing but doing nothing about it. Well, I mean, yeah, we we kind of uh, we kind of got that with the whole uh, uh, E P S T E I N E. Is that how you spell his name? We 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 kind of know that the people in power are definitely hiding stuff based on that situation. But still, why would someone make this game? <laughs> Like, as, as someone, you know, I've been building a game myself, and, uh, you know, I can tell you that it, it takes a lot of work, and I don't know why you'd put this much effort into making this, and then just having it on the the deep web where no one else can really play it, or it's very hard to find. It's also speculated that Sad Satan is linked to the YouTube upload called Sad Sad Satan. This is equally weird, and seems to hint at murders and child abuse committed by people in masks. Although we think that one is a whole nother story best saved for another video. There has been speculation that the game was in fact created by the owner of the channel, Obscure Horror Corner, to gain subscribers, and that the deep- That's possible. That's very possible. It's a smart tactic too. I won't lie, it's a smart tactic. But then again, he did like abandon his channel, so I don't know, maybe it didn't work that well. The web story was a complete fabrication, and others claim that Zayke and the owner of Obscure Horror Corner are the same person. Although, this is not something we necessarily believe, and we think Obscure Horror Corner stumbled upon the tame version of the game before realising its true content. He then sought to distance himself from it by abandoning his channel. Most That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense at all. I'll just make an apology video saying, hey, I didn't know what I was getting into, don't download the game, and move on with my YouTube channel. I wouldn't just abandon the channel, that doesn't make any sense. Agree. Without the images, there would be no controversy. It's a pretty weak game. It's the mystery behind it that intrigued people. Although we think they got more than they bargained for. If any of you are interested, Obscure Horror Corner is still an active YouTube channel. Wait, I thought you said they abandoned the channel! Although, like we said, nothing has been uploaded since the sad state controversy. As for oh. the real game... So they're not an active YouTube channel then? What are you talking about? Sad Satan seems to... Oh, the channel's active, but the uploader's not making videos. ...straddle the line between myth and reality. And despite there being clips out there showing gameplay, no one is really sure whether it did or does actually exist as a genuine game. However, if it is a real game, then we highly recommend you do not search for it, let alone play yeah. it. And if you've already downloaded it... Yeah, I wouldn't... I wouldn't download that. Are you kidding me? There's probably viruses. I would not trust it at all. Considering the disturbing images in the game, it could lead to you getting questioned by the authorities. Yeah, 
It's freaking creepy, man. No, this is the weirdest one yet, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. I can't... <laughs> Can't take any more of that. This is just pretty disturbing. I won't lie. Especially that last one there. That was disturbing. But um, yeah. I hope you guys like this. I know I didn't react to all five of them, but uh, I can't do any more of this right now. <laughs> it's too uh too too unnerving for me. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this nonetheless. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new, hit subscribe to the family, and uh, make sure you guys go subscribe to Top Five. You can support Top Five on Patreon. The links in the description. And yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Boop.